You might be used to seeing the world like this. But this is NASA's night lights. And it allows us to see what's happening on the Earth when the world goes dark. It's important because it gives us an insight into world events on a daily basis, or should I say, a nightly basis. And it gives us a chance to analyze very recent updates such as conflicts, disasters, blackouts, and even track the movements of vessels. And so over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to find NASA Nightlights data, how to use it, and all the while looking at world events in Ukraine, Gaza, Turkey, and North Korea, all from above, all at night. Hi everyone, I'm Dan and welcome back to my channel on Open Source Investigations. If you want to follow along in this tutorial, please check out the links in the description below. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with a colleague or friend that might be interested in this. Otherwise, let's get into it. To simply get to the tool that we're going to look at today, you can find the link in the description below, or you can easily type in NASA Worldview. When you get to NASA Worldview, you're going to be greeted with a little bit of a panel that shows you a lot of different selections of data. You can look at land surface disturbance, uh, surface water extent, things like satellite detections of fire. But the ones that we're going to look at is night lights from NASA's Black Marble. There's a little tutorial over on the right that just basically guides you through some of the case studies and a couple of definitions around what you might actually be looking at. But we're going to go through some of those in a bit. This is exactly what you're going to be looking at. On the left, there will be a panel under the Worldview tab that gives you the layers that you'll be looking at on your map. And then down on the bottom, you've got the daily imagery viewer. And it allows you to scroll along and view the data every single day. Of course, some days might be cloudy, so you'll often have to navigate through until you find a day that isn't so cloudy. If you'd like to look for other forms of black marble data, what you can do is click on add layers, go up to the top here, and simply type in black marble and you'll see there's actually quite a fair bit. Make sure you've got the black marble nighttime blue yellow composite one selected, as well as some of these others that you can play around with. I like the blue yellow composite because it just gives a clearer indication as to some of the nightlight spots and allows you to really identify things a little bit more clearly, such as if you're looking for vessels or flashpoints or other things like fires or things during conflicts. So what we're going to do is go through a couple of different case studies, specifically starting with Ukraine. I'm going to head over to the coordinates for Ukraine's Mariupol, and we're going to view this one here. So in early 2022, many of Ukraine's cities went dark. And using Black Marble, what we're going to do is have a look and see what impact from the night lights Russia's full-scale invasion had on Ukraine. What I'm going to do is click on this option here called Start Comparison. And this will bring up different windows, allowing us to view two different dates with a slider in between. I want to have a previous date, and we're going to have a look at Mariupol from January 31, 2022. And then I'm going to look at a date a little bit later. Now I want to scroll along a bit so that I can make sure I have a date that has less clouds on it. And as you can see, when I scroll along here, where we have Mariupol in the center here, when I scroll along from January 2022 into May 2022, we can see that according to the light data, it almost disappears off the map. Now, if I have a little bit of a look further on from May 22, any other date I look at barely has any indications of light data whatsoever for Mariupol. If we zoom out a little bit further, it gives us an indication as to what other cities might have looked like as well. You can see that when I use the slider, there's much less light coverage across Ukraine. If we have a look at Kiev, for example, the before of January 2022 and the after of March 2022 shows significantly less light emissions from Kiev in March than what it did in January. And it just goes to show the impact that that full-scale invasion had. Of course, there's a number of reasons as to why this might have happened, such as light camouflage, 
less power supply and we can see that in some of the later dates where there's less power emissions and less lights or other things. So it's always good to take this information in context with what's happening on the ground. Another location that we can see the impact through NASA's night lights data is in Gaza. If we have a look at data from before October 2023, we can see quite a lot of strong light emissions from this area in Gaza. Again, if I bring up the comparison function and I'll move my A tab, which is the left side of the screen, across to there. And then if I move my B tab into, say, for example, November, which is after October, we can see a complete disappearance in the nightlight data. One thing I recommend when looking at this is just to confirm any anomalies that might happen in the data is to click on other dates to make sure that either the disappearance or the appearance of nightlight's data is constant throughout those dates. And that helps you just get a little bit more confidence in the data so that you're not misreading any of the information. Again, we can't draw assumptions as to exactly why that's happened, but obviously the extreme bombardment of Gaza, coupled with the lack of fuel and electricity for generators and other things like that, decreases the chance for any potential of light emissions coming out of Gaza at night time. The nightlight is not just useful for conflicts, but also for disaster and humanitarian relief. For example, if we look at the February 2023 earthquake that struck southern Turkey, we can have a look at areas that might have suffered blackouts. I'm currently looking over this area in southern Turkey, and we're going to do the comparison function again, but this time I'm going to use the A tab for data from January 25, I'm going to use the B tab to identify a date just after that when the earthquake struck in early February. But if I move the dates forward, we can get an idea from February 8 as to what this place like Antakya actually looked like. If we do a before and after, we can see considerably less light emissions there. This is extremely important because this blackout happened during those earthquakes, indicating a lack of power supply to this area, which is shown through those light emissions at night time. A good example of the lack of power indicating a lack of night lights is if we have a look over North Korea. You can see quite a sparse area where there is significantly low levels of nightlight emissions in comparison to what would be over Seoul in South Korea. If we go back over those days and try and find a less cloudy day, you can very much see that this is consistent throughout that time, except for places like Pyongyang, for example, where we can see that patch of night lights data. But the clear comparison can be seen along that border there where there's almost a strict cut of the night light data in comparison to what we see in North Korea. Instead of viewing the blue-yellow composite, we can also have a look at the black marble sensor radiance, which is the black and white version. We're still looking over North Korea but one other interesting function of looking at NASA's night lights data is the vessels. As you can see, this is the land where North Korea is and South Korea is. And here's the ocean on both the right and also the middle in the Yellow Sea. And you can identify the number of vessels in that area. It's nice to view both different types of both blue and yellow composite as well as the black and white version to see the difference in that data and to also view that data over time and we can see those vessels moving around quite frequently there. Sometimes obviously that's obscured by cloud cover but it makes for a very interesting appearance just to view the habits of those vessels as they're in that water. Equally on the other side of here specifically around some of the bays 
of North Korea where we can see some of those vessels moving around. One of the functions of this viewer that I always find quite interesting is setting up animations to watch this data over the days that it's captured. For example, we can make an animation to show one day increments from 2025 July to September 2025 and just see what that looks like. Note in this central area around the Korea Strait where we can see those vessels moving backwards and forwards around the bottom of South Korea and see large groups of vessels moving around that area which shows a significant pattern of movements of vessels, maritime trade and other indications and just goes to show how powerful this free tool can actually be in making significant findings just by looking at the power of light on the Earth's surface at night time. I hope you enjoyed this session on looking at the world's activities from space at night by looking at the light data available through NASA's Worldview system, which is freely available and open to anyone with an internet connection and computer. And if you did enjoy it, please share it with a colleague or friend that might also enjoy looking at it. I've also launched a Substack newsletter that you can subscribe to to stay up to date with recent techniques and innovations, not just by myself, but by other individuals and organizations. I include specific tools in there, techniques, as well as interesting case files that you might want to dig into as well. So please do give that a subscribe and I'll see you in the next session.